everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and this time I am redoing a review that I've already done. I do that from time to time when I think it's necessary. I'm going to look at version 1 of Destro from 1983. Now, my first review of Destro was a long time ago, and that review never really took off, so I'm going to try again. Destro is too important a character to be ignored, one of the most important characters in all of G.I. Joe, so hopefully I can do a better job this time. Also, a channel announcement. This channel has hit 1,000 subscribers. Yeah! Everybody, give yourself a hand. Really, you deserve it. St really, stand up in your living room right now as you're watching this. Give yourself a hand. Brilliant. That's not me. That's you. That's you. That's right. You, 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 you. Thank you all so much for your support. That's what keeps this channel going. And we've got greater things to come, so let's keep going. Onward and upward. Excelsior! Now a lot of you saw the unboxing video that I did last week. Now that box is going to be the source of a lot of reviews, but this week's review was already in the works before I got that box. So this week's review does not come from that box, but Next week's review should come from that unboxing, as long as my plan works out. But enough about this channel, we have a figure to review, so let's do it. HCC 788 presents Destro. This is, you already know who this is, this is Destro, G.I. Joe's enemy weapons supplier. He was first introduced in 1983, the second year of 1980's G.I. Joe. He was also available in 1984 and 1985, so he was available for three years, where most G.I. Joe action figures are only available for two years. He was discontinued for the year 1986, and was he just not weird enough for 1986? In a series that included Serpentor and Dr. Dr. Mindbender, maybe the guy with the metal head was just too ordinary. There was a second version of Destro in 1988, and version 2 of Destro was the leader of the Iron Grenadiers. Uh, this one is not complete. He came with a red cape that attached to this shoulder. Uh, but this Destro uh, came with a vehicle, the Despoiler, so he was also a vehicle driver. Note the difference in the head colors. Version 1 of Destro has a shiny chrome silver head, and version 2 of Destro has a gold head. Destro has been romantically linked to the Baroness, and I think this is an excellent coupling. This is a power couple if there ever was one. Now, it seems obvious that the name Destro is short for destroy. It's just one letter off. But another G.I. Joe reviewer, and I think it was FormBX257, I apologize if I'm misattributing, but it was pointed out that the word Destro is Italian for right. Braccio Destro means right hand in Italian, but there doesn't seem to be anything in Destro's background that is Italian. Scottish, yes, but Italian, no. I think this Italian reference to right and right hand is a reference to fascism. At his inception, Destro may have been seen as the Mussolini to Cobra Commander's Hitler, a fellow fascist and an ally with his own agenda. Let's take a look at Destro's accessories, starting with his weapon. And this weapon, the contents of the card on which he was packaged, call this a high-density laser gun, but it looks a lot like the Mauser C96, also known as the Mauser broom handle. Although this is not an exact replica of that real world weapon, I do think it harkens back to that design. If you look at early TV commercials for the Destro action figure, you can see that he is carrying the weapon that later came with Major Blood. But I don't think this weapon was ever intended to come with Destro. If you look at early concept sketches for Major Blood, it looks like he was always intended to come with this weapon. So they must have used this accessory just as a stand-in for the commercial. Destro's next and final accessory is his backpack, which the card contents call an armed attaché case. This accessory is very plain on the outside, but it does open, and if you just kind of pry it apart, it opens up to show a lot of sculpted detail, lots of sculpted in weapons in there. You can see a disassembled M16 over here with a couple magazines. You've got a tiny pistol, some grenades, some knives, and looks like a barrel launched grenade there. Lots of detail inside that backpack. And in case you're wondering, that pistol does fit inside the backpack and you can close it. Uh, so you can store the weapon when he's not carrying it. The only problem with this backpack is it's not an 
attache. It's a backpack. If they had put a handle on here so you could carry it like a briefcase, I think that would have been perfect. Either in addition to the backpack or instead of that. Uh, it works okay as a backpack. It's not that bad. But an actual attache, I think, would have been more appropriate for Destro. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Destro, starting with that head, that crazy head. And he has a vac metalized chrome head, and that really stands out. This is supposed to represent a mask that he wears. Vac metalizing is a process by which metal is evaporated in a vacuum chamber, and it's used to apply a uniform coating of metal on an object such as an action figure's head. Although this mask is supposed to be metal, in the G.I. Joe cartoon series, when Destro spoke, his lips would move, which of course is impossible with a metal mask. Ron Rudat, the designer for Hasbro who designed Destro, said he was inspired by the man in the iron mask. Now, the man in the iron mask was a real person, a prisoner of King Louis XIV. His true identity is unknown. The man in the iron mask later became part of a novel by Alexander Dumas. Ron Rudat has mentioned seeing the man in the iron mask on television, and this is possibly a reference to the 1977 TV movie by that title, starring Richard Chamberlain. The design of Destro may have been based on the man of the iron mask, but the character definitely was not. Destro is not a prisoner, and he he is definitely no one's victim. Moving on to the chest, the weirdness continues. He's wearing what looks like a black leather jacket that is totally open in the front, exposing a bare chest and a ruby medallion. This is very disco. This is so disco, I'm not sure how this ends up on an action figure. He has a single strap going down his left side that continues around to the back, and it looks like he has some kind of communications device sculpted onto that strap, and he has raised shoulders. The arms continue the black leather theme, and on his wrists he has silver wrist braces, and on his right wrist he has two red rockets. And when we were playing with Destro as kids, of course he was firing these rockets at everyone all the time. He has what appears to be a series of red buttons. Now I know on the card art for Destro, uh, these are drawn in as grenades, but these do not look like grenades on the action figure. They look more like buttons. Destro's gloves also appear to be armored. His waist piece is also black and pretty plain other than a moderately detailed belt. His legs are also black and on his right leg he has a red holster presumably for his pistol but it doesn't look like the pistol would fit to me. On his left leg he has this flare so it appears he's wearing jodhpurs. Jodhpurs are trousers designed for horseback riding and they were often worn by military officers in World War II. On his feet he has what I would describe as jack boots, uh, specifically cavalry jack boots, which were worn by postilions who were drivers of horse drawn coaches. Jack boots are often associated with the Nazis, but the type of jack boots the Nazis wore were a different type. They were the hobnailed jack boot, and those are designed for marching. Destro is a very tall action figure. He is taller than the average G.I. Joe action figure, and they did not do that very often. Comparing him to an average height action figure like Airborne here, Destro Destro is half a head taller, so as an action figure, he is designed to be physically imposing. Let's take a look at Destro's file card. Now, this file card was printed on the back of the card on which he was packaged. You can see some of the artwork from the front of the card there. It has his faction as G.I. Joe, which is wrong. Uh, he was not necessarily an officer of Cobra. Uh, he was more of an independent operator, but he was definitely not a member of G.I. Joe. Later, Destro file cards would change this and it would have his faction as Cobra. And we have a portrait of Destro here. We have a specialty as enemy weapon supplier, code name Destro. His file name is unknown, but I guess in later G.I. Joe lore, he was given a name, James McCullen Destro, the 24th, and I'm not sure I like it. His birthplace is unknown, but we later learned that he is Scottish. This section says, Destro is the faceless power behind Mars, in parentheses, military armaments research system, largest manufacturer of state-of-the-art weaponry. To Destro, war is man's most natural state. The fittest survive and the greatest technological advances are made. He maintains a luxurious lifestyle around the world. Destro provides high-tech arms to any side able to meet his price and will incite war where it does not
not exist. He dons his silver battle mask, a family tradition, and enters battle himself either with Cobra Command, in parentheses, Destro is their major weapon supplier, or against them if it's better for business. Where it says, the fittest survive is an allusion to social Darwinism, and this mention of Mars creates a new organization, another player in the G.I. Joe universe. This bottom section says, Destro respects the G.I. Joe team for their combat skills and expertise, but abhors them for wasting such skills to maintain peace. He's totally dedicated to seeing them undermined, subverted, or destroyed. Destro is painted as cynical and self-serving, but with a code of honor. Notice Destro's inverted morality here. A G.I. Joe would consider their desire to maintain peace as a virtue, and their combat skills as a necessary evil to serve the greater good. But for Destro, it's reversed, and their desire to maintain peace is uh, useless, and their combat skills are their true virtue. Destro appeared many times in G.I. Joe media. In the G.I. Joe cartoon series, he appeared in the very first episode of the very first miniseries, A Real American Hero, in 1983. In the cartoon series, Destro is often depicted as the brains of the operation and is often frustrated by Cobra Commander's ineptitude. In the G.I. Joe cartoon, Destro collaborated with Dr. Mindbender to create Serpentor, the Cobra Emperor that would depose Cobra Commander as the leader of Cobra. This relationship is also reflected on Serpentor's file card, where it refers to a secret cabal of Cobra scientists under the direction of the interrogator, meeting Dr. Mindbender, and Destro. In the G.I. Joe comic book, Destro was not in the first few issues, but the comic book started before the cartoon series, and Destro was not released until the second year. Destro was introduced in the comic book in issue number 11, but he was only shown in shadow. He was not fully revealed. Revealed. And issue number 11 of the comic book is a legendary issue. It introduced a lot of new characters for 1983, including Snowjob, Doc, Gung Ho, and Airborne. Destro was fully revealed on the cover of issue number 14. Later, of course, Destro was the leader of the Iron Grenadiers, which was a private army and another adversary for G.I. Joe and for Cobra too. Uh, the Iron Grenadiers intervened in the Cobra Civil War for the sole purpose of rescuing the Baroness. Destro is also shown to have a personal fortress in Scotland, Castle Destro, and it is featured in the comic book entitled Assault on Castle Destro, uh, that's comic book issue number 87. Who is Destro's main rival on G.I. Joe? Well, maybe that would be Hawk, but only because they got in a fist fight once. I really think Destro's main rival is not anyone on G.I. Joe. I think Destro's rival is Cobra Commander. Although it's not explicitly stated, I believe Destro was the designer of the early Cobra vehicles, such as the His Tank and the Fang Helicopter, both of which have futuristic designs and they are black as they should be. Cobra weapons and vehicles always tended to have an experimental look to them, and that works better for me than when G.I. Joe vehicles that have that look, but I always consider Destro to be the source of those designs. Later, Dr. Mindbender somewhat took over that role as the inventor of the battle android troopers and the Cobra Hydro Sled. In the G.I. Joe comic book, Destro and the Baroness have pre-Cobra history, and the Baroness had split loyalties between Destro and Cobra Commander. Destro is known for his Machiavellian machinations to empower himself and overthrow Cobra Commander. He even tried to lure Cobra Commander into a trap where he would be killed by G.I. Joe. I think the insertion of Destro into the comic book makes Cobra out to be the kind of sinister underground organization that it should be, where everyone is trying to serve their own self-interest. Just look at how the comic book unfolded in the first few years. Cobra Commander built the organization, and the Baroness has split loyalties between Cobra Commander and and Destro, and Destro is trying to undermine Cobra Commander from the very beginning. Meanwhile, the Baroness is porking Destro, you know that's happening. Destro tries to lure Cobra Commander into a trap and then saves Cobra Commander when he realizes that he had also entrapped the Baroness. Cobra Commander uses Major Blood to try to assassinate Destro. He fails but almost kills the Baroness in the process. Major Blood saves the Baroness, and then Major Blood and the Baroness try to assassinate
assassinate Cobra Commander, only to have him saved by Destro. I think you can see how characters like Destro add a lot of depth to G.I. Joe. I mean, Cobra could be just some faceless organization that G.I. Joe defeats every week or every month, but instead, there's a lot more to it. I think it also shows why it's difficult to run an organization that is founded on greed, ambition, and ruthlessness. And that's why I think G.I. Joe defeats Cobra. Not because Cobra Commander is inept, but because nobody in the command structure is really a team player. They are all looking out for number one. Taking a look at Destro overall, this figure is supremely weird. I know I use that word a lot, but what other word can I use? He's got a metal head, an open collar, a medallion. He looks like a cross between C-3PO and Disco Godfather. And yet somehow, he works. It's impossible to explain why. It's, it's ineffable. I prefer realistic military figures for G.I. Joe, but for enemy figures, there's a bit more room for fantasy. I think that provides a contrast between the heroes and the villains. But that leeway only stretches so far before we get into the realm of absurdity. I think Destro approaches that line, but stays just on this side of it. One of the reasons the weirdness is forgivable for Destro is the strength of the character. The character of Destro is rich in depth and motivation. He sees himself as the natural leader of Cobra, and he's a man who understands power. Can a figure this strange be a top-tier figure? I think so, but just barely. That back-metalized chrome head is definitely a deluxe feature, but other than that, the figure is mostly just black with few painted details. But the character of Destro is so important that the figure is almost immune from criticism. If you write a character well, much can be forgiven. If you think this version of Destro is too weird, you may prefer version 2 of Destro, the gold head Destro, which is less disco and more sci-fi military. That was my review of version 1 of Destro. I hope I did it right this time. If you liked it, make sure you thumbs up on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. That's what keeps this channel going. And why not share this video and help this channel grow? I'm going to try to make next week's review something special. So stay tuned. And remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Action whenever you want. Remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. He's a terrifying enemy of G.I. Joe. Destro is his name. Destro is his name. G.I. Joe, American hero. Fighting evil Destro. Introducing Destro. You better watch out, Joe. Hey, what's going on? Destro's stealing our tank. We gotta stop him. We didn't get you, Destro. You've met your match, Joe. Destro is here. G.I. Joe Battle Tank comes with figure, other figures, and Destro sold separately from...